Hello and welcome back to Dive a Drop Out with me, Naomi Rodson. I am joined with Ben Bannum today, who was my first interview guest on the podcast and is the only repeat guest so far. For my 50th episode, I thought it would be really fun if, because now you're not just a podcast guest, you're mm. also my partner. Um, <laughs> and I thought it would be really fun if one of the people who knows me best interviews me for my 50th episode. So thanks for coming on Thank again. Thank you so much for having me here. It's such a pleasure to be back on Dive or Drop Out. I'm an avid fan, big listener, and uh, I've been craving getting back on since episode 18. Do you believe? <laughs> yeah. Episode 18, we're now 50. She's been smashing it, absolutely. Really? So yeah, thank you so much for having me here. And it's a wonderful honor to be able to interview you today. Yeah. What a turnaround, huh? <laughs> so for this very special 50th milestone episodes, we're going to be interviewing you. you know, we're turning the tables. You're a fantastic interviewer, podcast host. But how do you feel about being the guest today? Spirituality is quite quite a personal thing, I'd say. You know, it's quite an intuitive thing. And if you ask many different people, I doubt you're going to get the same mm -hmm. answer. So I was really intrigued since you talk a lot about spirituality on your podcast yourself. What would you define spirituality to you? How does that relate to you specifically? I think that spirituality isn't a religion. I don't think it's a set of rules that you follow. I don't think it's certain clothes that you wear or jewelry that you wear or practices even that you do. Mm. I think spirituality is an umbrella term for me. People who believe in something that's outside of the 3D, something that's more God, the universe, spirit, source. Yeah, the belief that maybe like not everything's explainable by logic. For the last however many years, we've had this like reductionist, scientific, logical, dominant ideology in society. And I think maybe in the last... 20 years a lot of people are like seeing all these synchronicities and seeing a lot of things that actually can't be explained by our science i don't think spirituality is necessarily one thing or isn't one thing but for me it's the belief that there's more to this world and this universe than meets the eye initially yeah. more than the 3d more than you know concrete reality yeah more than you can see with your mm. physical eyes yeah. yeah yeah it's interesting and uh, sometimes that can be really hard to grasp or believe that people are being brought up in this sort of society that is kind of grounded on mm. scientific discovery which is of course incredible mm. got many advances but people have a hesitancy to believe that you know in a spiritual realm or, or, or these sorts of synchronicities that you're talking about yeah. well, i would pass it off to coincidence yeah. yeah it doesn't really matter of course nothing's going on right mm. Yeah, and I don't really believe that anything's a coincidence. Mm. The butterfly effect of things impact things in different layers of reality and that then might come across as a coincidence, but it's not. I think it's all already designed. Mm. No such as an accident, you're saying? No? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and no, I kind of share that similar belief. And uh, that kind of sounds like you feel like it's got a bit of a plan going on. Mm. What do you feel about that? I'm in so two minds about this. And I, something I've really like thought a lot about this year is like, do I have free will? Is this all predetermined? Am I allowed to make weird decisions that <sighs> will then lead to something else? Or was that always going to happen? Mm. And I think I often think about the fact that, like, if I had your genetics, your life experience, exactly every single cell in your body and all your experience, I would make the same hmm. decisions as you, the same brain chemistry, everything. Yeah, yeah. And there's an argument there for the fact that we actually don't have free will. Yeah, it's really interesting. I think that would uh, freak a few people out. Yeah. So, you know, I, mean, I don't have free will. Mm. Like you're some sort of puppet. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's all predetermined. That feels like it almost takes away from life a mm. little bit. Uh, but from my perspective, maybe some people might think that having free will could be quite scary itself. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If you have that free will, are you going to make decisions which are not correct? Mm. Uh, could you not fulfill a purpose and things like that? Um, I think it's something we've talked about a lot. We'll probably say it a lot of times in this podcast episode, <laughs> but we always just say it's always a bit of both. It's always a bit of it's both. It's always a balance <laughs> and it's always like, 
you just never know and I think that's mm. also what spirituality is to me it's an accepting that you that we don't know no and that to spend your whole life trying to figure out a way to make it seem logical to you which like I think maybe controversially like religion is a, a way to sort of justify and like be like oh okay so that's how the no. world was created that no. was that's why we're here this is our purpose on this earth but i think spirituality is an acceptance that we just are never gonna know and and an acceptance of the unknown yeah never gonna know huh yeah almost embracing the the wild mystery of it all hey yeah it's almost i feel like your human mind or brain just can't encapsulate just mm. the sheer vastness the majesty of it all um, and some people will drive themselves a little bit crazy trying to figure it all out. Yeah. Hey? Um, yeah, interesting. As a belief of mine that perhaps uh, just reveling in the mysterious beauty of it all uh, mm. is perhaps what spirituality is to me. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, you've been on a spiritual journey for how long? Surely not your whole life. You've not been born. I was like, right, I'm starting. I don't know. <laughs> really? I like, I. Because when we were speaking about this episode this morning and yeah. you were saying, you know, asking me about my spiritual journey, I was like, fuck, like I actually have had a really spiritual life, like mm. from the from the get go. Wow. So what was your question? Well, exactly? my question was going to be, I wonder if you could describe to all your lovely listeners, perhaps your first memorable experience uh, of spirit or spirituality do you mean that, that special moment where you kind of plod along for me as i plod on along and then i had an experience you're like whoa i've not felt that before mm. something is going on i wonder if there's been one pivotal or memorable experience uh, perhaps the earliest one you can recount but that kind of happened to you i think i'll go like back to like the start of my journey with religion as well mm. in a sense that I was brought up in a very Christian household and like I'm very grateful to, for that in a sense because it made me really question like the big questions really mm -hmm. early on yeah um and it also gave me like an incredibly strong moral, moral compass that I don't think I would have had without without Christianity so I'm very grateful to it for that um but yeah I remember being four five years old in church and being like what if they're all lying to me like <laughs> I literally remember thinking that being wow. like what if like I remember thinking like what if this pastor's just like bullshitting me right now like what if this isn't all real and I think like so I was always very like questioning and just never really took things at face value, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. um, and then sort of decided that I was an atheist at like age eight or something. I don't fucking know. Uh, or no, a bit, bit earlier than that. I think <laughs> my my dad had started saying he was an atheist. So I was like, I'm an atheist. I don't think I really knew what that meant mm. fully. Um, but I sort of made peace with it by being a bit angry at christianity and just being like well nothing exists and that's like so early to be thinking about any of that sure. um and then i went back to church but it was a very charismatic church in the sense that it was like a lot of music and it was the first time i had ever worshipped yeah. or um when there's very emotional music playing when you're in like quite a vulnerable point in your life I think when you're an early teenager and there's a lot of people around you having like emotional releases and mm. things like that I definitely felt what I thought was the Holy Spirit yeah yeah wow um and felt like really moved by a lot of things and I found a lot of comfort in that as well in that point in my life and then I got a little bit older and realized that I got the same feelings at concerts mm. and I got the same feelings in nature and that maybe it wasn't to do with church and I maybe see. it wasn't this one God. Um, and I also really took issue with like a lot of um, the teachings around women in the church and um, a lot of the shame that I felt 
around my sexuality and yeah I felt there was like a lot of homophobia in the religion Mm -hmm. as Mm -hmm. a whole and then probably in like lockdown was when like my like spiritual journey began as such um and I think that was I think it was like a collective awakening for a lot of people in lockdown because it was such a collectively traumatic event to be disconnected yeah to have like all my exams cancelled to not be able to see my friends um but it was also like the best thing that ever could have happened to me to be like taken out of like just being away from like the pressures of society as like a 15 16 year old was so good and it really made me just figure out who I was without people watching me yeah sure um and then I really like was like right I'm gonna like try and sort my mental health out because it got quite bad um in lockdown which I think was the same for a lot of people um so I started sort of doing a lot of my own research and like a lot of my like TikTok and YouTube sort of algorithms were like very based around spirituality which Mm -hmm you know isn't necessarily a bad thing but like I won't sit here and say that like I I don't know that all these like things happen like a lot of it genuinely was from like TikTok and a lot of it was like astrology and I sort of very much got into that and then started doing yoga and meditation and read I can't actually remember the name of the book but it was a Thich Nhat Hanh Mm. book that changed a lot for me in the sense that I just realized that I could choose how I felt wow empowering yeah and I never realized that before like I always felt like my emotions and my feelings were like happening to me and to be able to sort of like take back that power and I also had like a lot of paranormal experiences which like made me think like fuck this there's something (laughs) something else yeah So, like, it all sort of kicked off around then. So, yeah. Okay, wow. That yeah. was a big it's answer. A big answer. <laughs> it's, it's been a journey. That's yeah. what I've gathered from that. But it also sounds like perhaps some of those earliest spiritual experiences came from music, mm. it sounds like. Just yeah. a collective. We call it worship. And, you know, people just gathering around that emotional release in the room, that big sort of emotionally inclined music is palpable yeah. in that space, isn't it? Yeah. But, of course, you say... It wasn't just confined to the church hall. Yeah. You can get it in concerts and all that sort of stuff. And uh, I wonder, it sounds like music's played a big part mm. in your experience of spirit. Yeah. Do you say that's true? Yeah, I would, definitely. I think I never realised until, like, this year, like, really how much music means to me. Mm. It's always... I've always just, on, like, road trips or on, like, travelling, like, I will just put my headphones in listen to music and just like think like productively think though like just be like right I'm gonna think about this thing and like problem solve and like I just love how music expresses emotions that just words alone can't or that like you can listen to a song and like almost step into another person's experience or they're mirroring your experience back to you and you're like yeah like you know you can listen to lyrics and all the different frequencies and it's like they've injected their energy of the emotion that they're feeding into that song at that time and you're like listening to it and you can then i feel like music is a way of trying on different lives wow there you go yeah quote that one (laughs) (laughs) but you're right people put in their sort of their essence into their music and you're able to feel that for a little bit and Mm. i feel like um that spirituality even spirit itself is you know people describe it their experience as ineffable is Mm. the word isn't it it means it can't be put into words like how do i fully describe this in words but Mm. i feel like music evokes something really deep inside yeah that you just can't put into words Uh, and people can share that with other people through their Mm. art and they can receive the sort of messages which are perhaps deeper than words themselves. Yeah. And that's a really intimate way of getting it across. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wonderful. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. When you start having spiritual experiences, like I did myself, there's been times in my life where I'm like, surely 
I'm going crazy. Mm. Do you know what I mean? The society itself, at least in my experience, has not really shown me that these sort of experiences are normal. Yeah. Or perhaps they've even been shunned. Do you know what yeah. I mean? They say, hey, no, you shouldn't be thinking about this. You shouldn't be feeling that and so forth. And for me, I was like, oh, my God, how do I know that I'm not going crazy? There wasn't mm. anyone around me to help validate these experiences. I could share them with friends and family. And uh, they're like, whoa, okay, that's cool, I guess. You know, I mean, they respect it. You know, they yeah. wouldn't really kill me for it. But they at least they weren't able to have that depth of conversation. And I wonder, you know, from your side of things, how did you know that you just weren't going crazy or hallucinating or, yeah. you know, sort of experiencing things that weren't really there? Yeah, I think there is like a risk of spiritual psychosis Mm -hmm. um which is like i always think really important to mention is that you can get to a point where you are seeing things Mm -hmm. that that aren't there and that you think everything is a sign and it this work can unfortunately be really damaging sometimes like the psyche is an incredible incredibly delicate and intricate thing that we need to treat with respect um so i just wanted to mention that but i think Mm. the way that i knew it wasn't going crazy was that something i've come to learn this year as i've been doing my course is that your experiences and your dreams and different experiences that you might have in expanded states of consciousness are experiences Mm -hmm. even if they're not concrete yes and they're still valid and they're still something that you experience and therefore should be treated with the same respect and with the same like analysis and depth that maybe a real life encounter should be Mm. because you know maybe you're in a meditation and you see something and you're like fuck how do I explain this how do I analyze this or or am I going crazy yeah that's just your subconscious mirroring something to you and it's not I think we get so caught up like I said earlier in this reductionist in this like we need to measure everything so I think the way I felt over not going crazy is that I don't need to explain it away Mm. I don't need to rationalize it. I can have an experience. I can see something. I can be seeing all these mad numbers everywhere. Like I can I can have an ineffable experience uh-huh. and that's enough. Right. I don't yeah. I don't need to like, you know, yeah, it's interesting to analyze these things, but sometimes you can just have a a dream, write it down, and then be like, okay, I don't need to necessarily explain it. Yeah. Um, and I think another way that I sort of was able to feel a little bit more grounded was, you know, it is hard because, but like community and and like-minded people and, Mm. um, it's really difficult if you don't have people like that. But yeah, I found a lot of comfort in like following influencers and like seeing people online who had podcasts or TikTok accounts or whatever, or YouTube videos and being like okay well they're experiencing this or they or Mm. they are also feeling this weird energy at this moment like and i'm not alone in that so yeah that's yeah it just feels like it sounds like just not feeling alone yeah it's the way to feel like you're not going crazy Mm. um you know my personal experience if you are by yourself in your own thoughts you can question it a hell of a lot and in my own personal journey it's been really about uh, doing lots of research in different books. Mm. I love listening to books. Not much of a reader, but I'm definitely much of a much more listener. Mm. And uh, I listen to lovely books uh, like Ram Dass, Michael mm. Singer, Thich Nhat Hanh. These are all wonderful yeah. and beautiful people. And these are describing these sort of experiences. They're well respected. Yeah. And that can be made me feel a bit more comforted yeah. in my experiences. That okay, right? These guys are saying about, it and they're very popular. They're very respected and well regarded. Then perhaps you know maybe I'm not going to go crazy. Yeah, and also I think if you are having these experiences like i would highly recommend doing as much research into jungian psychology as you can because Mm. he very much puts the ineffable somehow puts the ineffable into words and i think this summer like as i've been like learning more about Jung, like i've just been like reading it and feeling so comforted Mm and feeling like 
oh, okay, like someone else has experienced this, analyzed it and been able to put it into some sort of writing, which makes sense. He puts archetypal and symbolic meaning into words in, in a way that no one else has been able to. He's like, it. his ideas aren't new necessarily, mm-hmm. but he's a, he's a translator yeah. for for ideas which is which is really really comforting yeah um so yeah that's another way that it's sort of stay grounded yeah, in that too right yeah cole young is uh, uh incredible in the fact that he kind of got so close very scientific mm. isn't he? but he always bridged science and spirituality together got yeah. very close to that after having developed a spiritual concept about your life mm. i wonder how has that like changed the way that you interact with people on a day-to-day basis you know, when you have a look at someone and you see them and you interact with them and you see their life, how does that change your perspective of them? Yeah, I think I can't actually remember specifically what book or what teacher or who said this, but <laughs> it was something about the fact about about compassion and, ha- and having compassion for everyone. And this like was a practice that like just really, really shifted how I interacted with people on a day to day basis um was just like softening and Mm. i think previously i'd gone through life feeling like everything was personal against me if someone was rude to me if someone was mean to me i would be like i don't know i would just (laughs) take it personally and think it was like an issue that i had done wrong and then that just creates more suffering but then i realized oh well if i'm a bit off with someone like if i'm a bit rude by Mm. accident or like or accidentally don't say thank you or something like that I would never think like oh I'm a bad or maybe I sometimes would but like (laughs) I wouldn't I know that I'm not a bad person for that it's because something else is going on Mm -hmm. in in my day and Flo and I my sister and I we came up with this phrase which was you never know what's going on inside someone else's car and it's because we were driving and this guy was like on the phone and just like walking in the middle of the road basically and like I was like what is that guy doing and then we were driving and we were like hang on like he could have just been getting a phone call that like his wife had passed away or like Uh he was getting a divorce or like you know there's all these like things and you just never know what's going on inside someone's world so I think after developing that sort of mindset and just like softening into like a bit more compassion and then also like sitting with psychedelics and I already knew this in theory but until Mm. sitting with psychedelics I had never felt it the like true universal consciousness of everything that none of us are really separate Mm -hmm. and we are all one and we're all manifestations of the divine and that's what I believe anyway Mm -hmm. and what I know to be true and what I feel and when you realize that none of us are separate and then we're all one, you just, I just think I have a lot more grace for people and want to just be kinder and nicer. And yeah. like, it, do- it doesn't mean I'm going around like, you know, I wish maybe I was like going around complimenting everyone and like everything, but like just generally being kinder and more patient and more loving with people who I interact with on a daily basis and just giving people a little bit more like space yeah to yeah. just be them and and not taking it personally you know mm. if if someone does something stupid mm. it's just like I know that's not a reflection of me not taking it personally yeah yeah wow it almost sounds like to me that you're just seeing other people as an extension of yourself yeah or me as an extension of other people as yeah. well yeah and the good you know, we always say as well to each other that the beauty that you see in another person is a reflection of the beauty that you see in yourself. Indeed. So it can be sort of both ways, mm. which yeah. I quite like. Yeah, I think that's really magical, isn't it? If you see beauty elsewhere, that's within you as well. Yeah. It's really, really nice. And uh, yeah, some experiences I had have been very, very wholesome mm. is where I um, consider other people to be extensions of myself. Yeah. And the kindness and the compassion and the heartfelt gratitude I express to them I almost return on to myself. Yeah. Uh, and it's really selfless in, in some sense, but also yeah. selfish in others. Yeah. Like, well, if it's you're me, then I'd be nice it? to you. <laughs> yeah. Then I'd be nice to myself. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the day, 
I agree. I don't mm. know if there really is anything else apart from yourself in this yeah. uh, in this world. Yeah. Well, wonderful. Okay. Well, I tell you what. I wonder if you might be willing to do a small exercise with me. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to invite <laughs> you. <laughs> okay. Okay. We get it. Does that if you don't like it? No, but we're okay. going to do it anyway. Okay. Okay. So, how about you close your eyes for one moment in time? Okay. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to invite you to place your hands in your heart. Take a real deep breath in. Breathe out all the tension. Ooh, nice little inner world reset. Because in your mind's eye, a nice inner world visual field, I want you to picture yourself, your very own self, little Nomi, but she's five years younger than you right now. This 15 year old Nomi sat right in front of you. I want you to picture her in vivid detail. She might be standing up, sitting down, maybe wearing some school clothes. Wherever she might be, just hold her there in your mind's eye for a moment's time. I want her, I want you to introduce your presence here right now to her. Make sure that she knows that you're there and that you're with her. I want to ask you just one thing. If you have that connection with that younger version of herself, which I believe that you've now established, what one message or piece of wisdom would you want to impart on her? Keeping your eyes closed and just kind of uh, intuitively channel that through to her. What does she need to hear from you right now? Mm. So much. Mm. She needs to hear a lot. I would say to her that there's, even though everything seems so big right now there's so much more to the world than like what's right here mm. and I would just ask her to get a little bit of perspective and look at her life in a whole and know that this is just like a blip in the grand scheme of things and she needs to sleep and <laughs> eat and drink water <laughs> and just get get through the next bit and the next bit and the next bit um and i tell her that there's like so many wonderful people and experiences coming her way that she could never even like imagine the like possibilities of and that's all going to be okay uh, even if it doesn't feel like it and to keep fighting mm. well very wise words very <laughs> interesting i'm sure she really appreciated that okay now i know a lot of people that listen to your podcast must have some sort of spiritual curiosity hey they mm. stuck around for 50 maybe, episodes they maybe. must have some sort of thing <laughs> like, okay i'm interested in this sort of stuff mm. but i would suggest that sometimes out there in the wild world there's uh some not so nice influences you know and, and oh i gosh. wonder if someone is spiritually curious yeah. what might you advise them to do to begin their journey inside of themselves you know and it's kind of what maybe sort of practices teachings or or wise words would you say is okay i want to start looking inside but i'm just so lost there's mm. loads of stuff online loads of people giving different messages which one do i believe mm. i don't know what you would suggest to someone i would say take an order of your life mm. so write down like a typical day in your life, write it down, like from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep. And then at every different step, think, how how could I do this differently? If it's something that isn't like making you happy or isn't serving you, just like break each section of your life down basically mm. and think about the areas that you want to improve. And don't, you know, go rushing in all at once it might be that you feel like you really need to like get in some more exercise or eat a little bit better 
So start with your diet and start, you know, find a nutritionist online or find or read one book around that and implement a small habit changing that. Um, But in terms of like more specifically spirituality, um, let your intuition guide you. Don't get overwhelmed. Like Like you said, there's so much out there and so much content out there. You don't need to buy every book and everything I think I'm just looking at my sort of stack of books over there and they're books I've read over years and years and are like you know great teachings but I would always say that spirituality is never something that like can be taught or like other other people's ideas can be so impactful for you but really everything that you need to know is already within you Mm. um so i would start with you and start with journaling and connecting to nature yeah Yeah. i think before you just yeah starting a simple meditation practice Mm. and making more of an effort to connect to nature yeah would be and and also like being very aware of your i think in this day and age we're super hyper aware of like sort of our diets and not eating processed food and like well quite a lot of people are Mm -hmm. but being aware of your digital and like your media diet as well um and like the music that you listen to the radio that's in the background the fact that we're bombarded with like advertisements all the time just being aware that everything affects your subconscious Mm -hmm. and being maybe a little bit more strict or regimented or boundaried with that with yourself and being like no actually I don't want to feed my brain with this right now Mm -hmm. and like now I don't really like watching like really violent things or like uh, things with like a lot of <laughs> maybe this is like I don't know me avoiding them, like shadow work but I just don't want to fill my mind with certain things no so yeah that was yeah. like I don't know if that was a good answer but yeah I think that's a good answer I and mean, what I'm hearing there is it's just kind of before diving in to yeah. the vast dare I say infinite world of spirituality I'm hearing take stock of yourself yeah get to know yourself a little bit understand what's going into you in terms of food in Mm. terms of digital in terms of media all that sort of stuff understand your habits throughout your daily life that sound like you're talking about and journaling is a fantastic effort Mm. in trying to understand yourself a little bit yeah i did a good episode on that a couple weeks ago um and yeah journaling meditation all these like self-awareness practices becoming just aware of yourself and also Mm. like the patterns of behavior that you have um before trying to change them yeah yeah just bring them into awareness that makes sense because i think a lot of people and it's not a judgment at all on like anyone but a lot of people are walking around and going about their lives in a state of complete unawareness of what they're doing which again like i said isn't a judgment and before doing all the like the work that i have like i think i was the same of you just work you walk around almost like on autopilot yeah um so yeah i would say just bring that awareness back bring to yourself awareness of what you're doing it sounds yeah. like slowing the pace down yeah as well, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah definitely slowing the pace down staying grounded coming back to yourself mm-hmm. remembering that everything you have and everything that you need is within you yeah that's comforting isn't it yeah you don't need anything else outside of yourself yeah uh, and people kind of think that yeah i need this thing I need this person. I need these experiences, perhaps, in order to be happy. But it's all just inside. Yeah. Like, I think maybe it can frustrate people a little bit. Yeah. Like, what well, do you mean? I got it the whole time. Yeah, because <laughs> I think it would be so much easier if yeah. there was a retreat, a yeah. crystal, a book, uh-huh. a, a yoga practice, a yeah. meditation practice that could fix you, could heal you, mm. could, you know, one stop shop just sort it all out but there's nothing like that you know even even psychedelics it's nothing you really have to do a lot of work and it's and it's hard hard work as well it's you know we say to each other like emotional weightlifting or spiritual weightlifting it's it's put it's uncomfortable because Mm -hmm. growth is uncomfortable a lot of people would rather be unaware than go through some painful growth 
which yeah. is you know, that's, like you said I... in our first episode some people's you know that clip actually went viral well like a little bit viral which one of you saying that like some people's experiences on this earth wasn't meant to be spiritual in yeah. this lifetime hmm. yeah well it sounds like what you're saying is it's really hard doing a spiritual investigation into yourself yeah not even spiritual i think any sort of self-improvement anything yeah. where, where where you're um leaning into unknown territory mm-hmm. growth is unknown you don't know what it's necessarily gonna look like yeah that's fine i think a lot of people might envision a spiritual exploration of themselves it's filled to be joy mm. and happiness and bliss and spirituality is this wonderful experience love and light love and light oh god i'm just beaming from the inside i'm golden <laughs> i'm radiant i mean all this sort of stuff yeah uh which it can be mm-hmm. hey don't get me wrong but also i think there's another side of it that people maybe not be fully aware of so mm. if you're embarking on this journey then uh you're going to have to face a few shadows. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? A few monsters under the bed that you've been tucking away and not really been looking at. Oh my God, that needs to come out before I can be fully Mm radiant. So maybe advising people about that as well. Mm, Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think like, I don't, I hope you don't mind me saying this, but I Mm -hmm. think both of us this year have been through a bit of a dark night of the soul. Yeah. um, And face some like, uncomfortable wounds Mm. and yeah I feel like sometimes the further you get into this art you're like okay I was not ready to deal with that (laughs) so conscious pattern of behavior yeah I think you do have to like I said in my sort of journaling and like shadow work explained episode which I think would be a good resource after you've watched this video if you haven't already but you have to like look at the parts of yourself that are undesirable Mm -hmm. that that you would feel embarrassed to bring to a dinner party and that you Mm. don't like about yourself which you know so much of spirituality is like self-love affirmations i'm the best person (laughs) blah 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 blah. but like actually to fully like improve yourself and to show up more presently and show up better for the people in your life and for yourself Mm in all of your connections, in your career, in in every moment, and to be able to stop letting your past Im- impact your present, you mm. have to take a look at those uncomfortable, at those shadowy parts of yourself, at the things that actually even make you cringe to journal or cringe to even say out loud to another person. Mm-hmm. Um, that's like the root of where the work is in in my opinion yeah and i agree and in my experience there's been certain parts of myself that i even cringe to to talk about to to myself yeah i mean it's like it's just me (laughs) me, no one else is going to listen to this even if i'm right in my head uh, which is a very safe space i don't even want to write about some aspects of myself yeah that's crazy huh Mm -hmm. yeah well it's not crazy but it's just (laughs) it's just really hard to take a cold hard look at some of those aspects of yourself but as you say that's where the real meaningful deep work mm, is, but it's so. also uncomfortable. We talk sometimes about peak experiences. Mm. I want, have you talked about that in some of your podcast episodes? I've listened to a lot, <laughs> but I haven't listened to everyone, I've got to admit. Um, is that somebody, a phrase that people might be familiar with? No, probably not. Okay, probably I wonder, not. you know, how might you, what would you describe a peak experience to someone? What, how would you describe what that is to someone? I mean, that is, I would say, a key part of a, a spiritual Oof. exploration of yourself. You have these wonderful experiences which you might call peak ones Mm. but what's your impression of that for me personally this might not be everyone's definition but for me peak experiences is are experiences that make me look around and think i'm so fucking glad i'm alive Mm, wow that make me think like i'm so glad i'm here i'm so happy i'm human (laughs) i'm so happy i got to live on this earth at this time to be able to experience that and peak experience can be anything from like i would describe some of my swims at sunrise to be peak experiences but equally could be a psychedelic experience it could be a festival Mm -hmm. it could be um, a conference Mm. um so i think people's definitions vary uh it could be a skydive i think i think it's something that 
maybe pushes you a little bit out of your comfort zone. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Or is is out of the ordinary, Yeah, I would say, sure. for you. Because we can't be having peak experiences every day. Not every day. Um, it, it, it's something that creates a lot of impact in your world, maybe. Uh, good impact, probably. Because bad impact would be like grief, heartbreak, and that would be the, the trough, you sure. know, or the valley. Sure. And a, and a peak would be ecstasy, pleasure, bliss, yeah. love, connection. Yeah. Um, so that's how I would describe a peak experience yeah interesting I, I noticed your hands in there if you're listening you can't see the videos there's a little yeah. wave up and down with the hand mm. and it's like the peak experience is the top of that sort of wave if you will but do you yeah. think there's a downward afterwards yeah, like definitely. you have to come down i think afterwards? there's a, i think there's a natural drop i think i i experience emotions and I, life very acutely right. and i always have done um and now I've sort of learned to ride the wave of that. Mm, well. um, but I think, and again, I always say like, oh, this isn't a judgment, but I sometimes feel like I come across as judgmental and it's not, it's just an observation. Disclaimer. Disclaimer. <laughs> but I think some people live their lives on on a constant sort of baseline of con somewhere in between contentment and dissatisfaction sure um and they live their lives and like aren't that happy but aren't that sad and Mm -hmm. they just sort of get on with things Mm -hmm. and continue on through i think other people live their lives and i don't think this is a a bad thing but chasing the peak experiences and and chasing the highs um but with that, I do think comes a natural down. But I don't think for everyone, it goes down past that natural baseline. Sure. So I think maybe there's like a sort of baseline of like contentment or like being sort of okay. And you might hover between that. For me, I will have a peak experience and I go past that baseline and go and go down under. But I know that I'll come back up again, mm. maybe to baseline and then carry along there. And I think there's like just sort of like a graph of experience and there's varying things that you can do. But for me, there there is always a drop and I can and I know that and I'm able to now support myself for that. But maybe it doesn't need to be as dramatic as it has been in the past for me. I see, yeah, I suppose, yeah. you know, experiencing the peak and, and, and anticipating the drop mm. sounds like that might be somewhat comforting. Yeah. Like, and, and less disorientating because I know sometimes you have those peak experiences and you're not feeling too good after. Mm. It's like, what happened? What did I do wrong? Mm. Oh, why am I like this? But perhaps part of the process. It and, and, like. and accepting that and accepting that these peak experiences are peak experiences because they're never going to happen again. Wow. exactly in the same way hmm. you'll never have the same experience twice ever no. you'll never even experience the same person twice you know in my mm-hmm. in my humble opinion i think everything is always changing yes. and people's sense of self and people's sense of identity is like our perceptions of ourselves is very rigid. You know, you wake up and you see the same face every day and you think, mm-hmm. I am Ben because I'm Ben and I have a ginger beard and I look in the mirror and I'm Ben. <laughs> well, yeah. Maybe not, but... <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but really, we're all ever-changing, uh-huh. fluid experiences of consciousness. Mm-hmm. Went off on a little tangent there, but having that understanding really helps you to be able to put peak experiences into their into their uniqueness and and love the drop because without the drop there wouldn't be the peak and Mm -hmm. and it's another young quote that we like to say the tree cannot grow to heaven without reaching without rooting down to hell one of my really big strengths is is that i'm not afraid of big emotions Mm. i'm not afraid of darkness i'm not afraid of grief i'm not afraid of heartbreak because i know out of that now like this might sound a bit sick maybe a bit sadistic (laughs) but now i sort of understand that when these things that we perceive as as bad Mm -hmm. and can and can cause a lot of suffering and a lot of pain i know that something really good is around the corner wow because I know that I can transmute that pain and reach up to heaven. Yeah, wow. You know what I'm gathering from that? It's peak because it's unique. 
There you oh, go. You can quote that one as yeah, well. I like so many on this <laughs> <laughs> But it sounds like that's range. Yeah. You have range. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And to go down, to come up. And maybe the peak is so wonderful because of the contrast of the trough. Yeah. I'm like, so I'm looking, I'm at this peak, and it might be a mountain. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I also imagine a mountain peak. I'm stood on top of it and I'm looking down behind me at the drop yeah. I've just come from and the sheer drop to the height I now find myself in yeah. is what that unique pleasure is in. It's like, wow, I've come from there and I'm now stood up here. Yeah. And what a wonderful experience oh, it I is. I always think that. I think if I hadn't experienced the darkness and pain that I have in my life, the moments of bliss and pleasure and joy and love and connection are all the sweeter because yeah. I know what it's like to be so down. Yeah and for it to be so dark so we're sat here in your home yes this is your home yes this is your physical this is my house home. This this is my house. <laughs> <laughs> but i wonder what is your concept of home the word home and how has that evolved over time mm, for you that's gonna make me cry <laughs> i don't know why that made me feel emotional wow um my concept of home I've always moved around a lot um, and like having divorced parents like I do think that you just grow up with like less of an attachment to necessarily a place mm. or like a room or just your physical space um, which is a blessing and a curse. Um, so my my definition of home is wherever my tribe is. Mm. um and that's my family and my friends and you and wherever they are is home wow yeah tribe is quite an interesting word to use mm. it feels quite primal yeah and there's a relation to that somewhere yeah i think because see family is is you know your family yeah. your you can't choose your family no um and tribe is like these are the people who I've welcomed into my life huh. and have a commitment to almost. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's not necessarily like a romantic commitment, but mm -hmm. a commitment to support and show up for one another in a conscious community led way. Yeah. And that's sort of why I guess I use the word tribe is yeah. that because it's, it's not just my family. No, you can include your family, yeah. of course. Yeah, of but course. there's like other people. And it's like, Almost like a chosen family. Yeah. Sounded like. Yeah. Wow. Really. And when that, like that, wherever those chosen family are, mm. where they where they are, that's where your home is. Yeah, a hundred percent. And wherever I feel a sense of safety and and peace. Safety, peace, and community mm. is where home is. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that wonderful? It could be anywhere in the world. It sounds yeah. like not necessarily in your actual house. No. Uh, but wherever that tribe might reside. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Fascinating. And I guess in a tribe like that, there's this big sense of love. Mm. Because that sounds like that's what stitches that tribe together. I wonder, what is love to you? What does that mean to you? Because people say, oh, I love you. Do you mean, or oh, I love this, or this is lovely. But you know, what, what does love mean, really? That is such a good question, but so hard to put Isn't into it? words. I think the opposite of love is fear. Hmm. And I think every emotion is on a spectrum between fear and love. Right, those being the poles. Yeah. Mm. So I think sometimes it's really helpful to look at something that you're trying to explain and look at the opposite of it. Um, and because grief isn't the opposite of love. Grief is suffering at the expense of love, at the, wow. at the loss of love. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that the opposite of love is fear. And what is love? A close word would be, would be gratitude. Okay. I think if I'm trying, I'm sort of building a an old chase map. <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm really rubbing off on you, aren't I? <laughs> of of love and connotations and and the connotations for me are gratitude, connection, mm. Mm. admiration, mm -hmm. support. I think love is both a feeling and a verb. Yes. Um, I think that, but I think they're two separate things. 
I think you can feel love yes. for something yes. and you can love something yes. for someone. Uh -huh. um, so the feeling of love, I think, is a full body sensation, but like primarily for me emanating from my heart. And it's almost like an ache of like, oh, just like, I just saw your body soften. Like <laughs> yeah. Like melty. Just, yeah, melty and, and gooey. And like, I think, I guess at, at the, at the core of it is that you'd be really sad if they died. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, or if that they weren't present in your consciousness anymore. Mm -hmm. If their appearance in your appearance of consciousness weren't to merge anymore, you'd feel mm -hmm. sad at that and you'd mm -hmm. feel a sense of loss mm -hmm. at a very basic and reduced level that's yeah. what i would say but the verb to love is to actively like show up support express gratitude for um create more pleasure and bliss and and love and mm. joy and, and play and fun yeah. in that other beings because like, I don't think you can just love people. I'm talking about like animals, plants. Like yeah. you can love anything. So anything. so to so to create more goodness in their experience mm -hmm. on a continual, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis, and having a deep commitment to that, I would say is the verb to love. Well, yeah, incredible. And we talked a little bit about how you know, everything and everyone is kind of an extension of yourself. Yeah. And if you're loving other things, you're loving yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like for so long, it's a bit fucking deep. I really thought that I loved myself hmm. because I thought I was good. I just thought highly of myself maybe. Sure realize that all the little things I do for myself are from a place of love and when you consciously bring that into your awareness of like I get myself water so that in an hour when I'm thirsty I've got it and that's like me loving myself and and the, and the opposite is true you know of of doing things that aren't loving towards yourself yeah it's almost like you read my mind because a follow-up question would be, how do you love yourself? Yeah. A lot of people might say they don't love themselves. Mm. And that's quite a hard place to be. Um, I know yeah. I've been in a place that myself and it's hard to find the love for yourself. Yeah. I was actually speaking about this with my friend the other day. Um, I always really hated the phrase, you can't love anyone else until you love yourself. Huh. Because I was like, oh, well, I don't really myself so like but that's really unfair then that means i can't love other people mm. and i don't necessarily think that's true to its core no but i think you can't access a deeper state of love for another person until you love yourself and how to find self-love is a is like again it's love as a verb not as a feeling right it's n not just you love yourself when you know you're all dressed up and you put a bit of makeup on and and you're being nice and you're being like outgoing or whatever you feel like is your best version of yourself mm. it's not just loving yourself in those moments it's mm. fucking up it's saying something that you regret it's like not feeling your best it's like eating like shit and like or like just, you know, just not being a perfect person because no one's perfect. Mm. And still mm. in those moments, giving yourself grace, love, compassion, forgiveness, wow. yeah. and still being able to look in the mirror and say, yeah, despite it all, in all your carnal glory, I love you no yeah. matter what. Like yeah. y your self-love can't be conditional on your productivity, your fitness, wh whatever it is, yeah. Yeah. you can't, only love yourself when you do a certain thing it has to be in every single moment and it's a continual daily practice you know rent is due and it's due every day mm -hmm. for self-love it's like mm -hmm. not something that you can just find and keep it's, mm. it's 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 continual yeah yeah what i'm hearing there is that true love is unconditional mm. there's yeah no, there's no condition for it to take place and and not expecting anything in return 
Huh. Yeah, so it's not conditional, nor is it transactional. Yeah, yeah, and and I think that's something that like a lot of people could reduce their suffering a lot. Really, is loving people and themselves mm. untransactionally, mm. unconditionally, mm-hmm. just for love for love's sake. Yeah, because yeah. it makes you feel really good just to love and I might not keep this in but I'm gonna say it anyway Mm. um and it's something that you have shown me in our connection and like that that we can just love each other I think Mika is actually just unconditional Mm. I do exactly know what you're saying yeah I think that's so wonderful yeah (laughs) Oh, so it sounds like you've had so much spiritual experience. What profound journey you've been on over the entirety of your life, the last 20 years or so. And I think you're a wonderfully talented artist. Mm-hmm. Do I say so myself? I've seen lots of your art. And my people might say that this podcast right here is a piece of art. Yeah. And I wonder if you had to just take back, take stock of your entire journey, of your whole life, that whole spiritual experience, which is just life itself. Yeah. So that is a spiritual experience. What? How would you encapsulate that, if at all possible, in mm. a single piece of art? And what might that look like? The the thing that first came to mind was like a a cocoon to a butterfly. Wow. But that didn't feel cyclical enough. That mm. that felt like. So then the second thing that came to mind is I don't know what the fuck the actual spiritual word is, but you know the snake that is going around and eats itself. And eats itself. Yeah. I would say that. Wow. Not necessarily for the snake, for the snake's sake of being a snake or anything sure. really symbolic about that necessarily, but more of the fact that I feel like I am constantly dying and being reborn into new versions of myself. And I constantly have felt like just throughout my whole life, I've just been like, fucking hell, I've lived a lot of lives. Yeah. Um and I and I have and I've been through like a lot of different phases and uh beings of myself or like we spoke in your episode about, you know, Ben 2.0, 3.0. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm on Naomi 3000.0. <laughs> like so I constantly feel like versions of myself are dying and being mm. reborn and what I'm learning is just how cyclical everything is, you know, mm. down to the moon, down to my menstrual cycle, mm-hmm. down to everything. Seasons, it's yeah. it's all seasons and it's all, it's all cyclical. Um, so that is h- how I would encapsulate my whole life. Wow, that's incredible that you can boil it down all into that, that single essence of yeah. just having a, a circle and it's starting yeah. again. Yeah. It was the same when I was born and it's the same when I was, when I die. Yeah. I yeah. don't I don't believe that energy can be created or destroyed it's just transferred um and i saw this wonderful sentiment somewhere the other day that this whole thing like Mm. not just this world like this this cosmos this universe is an ocean and we are all just peaks of the Mm -hmm. waves Mm -hmm. you're a peak I'm a peak, a little peak, and say, <laughs> hey. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we will rise as peaks as consciousness, as humans, mm-hmm. and go back into the ocean. Yeah. That's what I find a lot of comfort. Yes. Um, and, and joy in as well. Is yeah. that like, and I've sp- said this in, a, in an episode, but like I'll say it again, you know that meme that's like that guy on the bus and he's like looking out. And it's like all like wonderful like rainbows and yeah, stuff, yeah, and then yeah. it's like that. Never got it's like it's like yeah. you can look at the world and think, oh well, I'm just a blip in consciousness. Mm-hmm. Nothing matters, and you can be all sad about it. Yeah. Or you can look outside of the bus and be like, I'm just a blip in consciousness. Uh-huh. Nothing matters, and yeah. how fucking cool is that? Yeah. How liberating. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. 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 Wow, sounds like loads of little cycles in your own lifetime. Mm. You know, the different versions of Naomi going along, but also just a lifetime itself is just one yeah. larger circle as well. That's part of a bigger circle. That's part of another bigger circle. Oh part... my God, where does it end? Yeah, something's going on. Does it end? <laughs> something's going on. <laughs> I 
think that's uh, that's so true, and it, it resonates really deeply with mm. me, and it gives me strength. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That that we are in this sort of different cycle, and that it has its ups and its downs, its peaks and its troughs, as mm. we were talking about before. And everything is natural, and it's all okay as yeah. well. Yeah, and that it all balances out as yeah. well. Mm. That there's nothing that goes down that doesn't come up. Yeah, it's a slightly woo woo one. Okay, Do you want to put that hit in? me. Okay, all right. So. Throughout your spiritual journey and experiences, you know, you talked about your definition of spirituality being something that you just can't see. Yeah. Like more to what you can see in this world with your eyes, all that sort of stuff. I wonder, do you feel like you've ever contacted or communicated with what might be referred to as spiritual beings? Not like Mm. people or energies, but more you know, different energies and beings out there. Uh... Yeah, I've worked with like, um, and again, I bring this back to Jung and I bring this back to archetypes of the subconscious. Mm. So when I say this, I am maybe not speaking about it in such a spiritual sense as maybe you're asked the question Mm. of spiritual beings or like contacting them. But through various expanded states of consciousness, including psychedelics, um, but meditation and mm-hmm. and reading various things and also creating and through art as well. Yeah. Um, there's like a couple different sort of archetypes or beings that I have like had contact with. Um, and one of them is not like anything that I can, I've been searching for sort of, uh, a way to put this in a box and a way to like label like oh this was this entity that I encountered but I've not been able to so far but I'll just say it anyway um in my first as I've been experienced I was like I encountered this being that was awe inspiring jaw dropping ineffable I remember just like looking at she was very, she was feminine. Mm. I remember that, mm. um, and I remember looking at oh, I mean, even to say her, it wasn't gendered, but it had a feminine energy. Sure. Um, and I was looking at at this being, and just like, like whoa. Mm. Um, and I was actually a bit scared as well. Oh, thought sounds like yeah, and it was like peacock like, uh huh, orange and pinks and intricate but simple um and just took up a lot of my visual field Mm. and there was another being but i couldn't make them out as well um so that was one and that's something that like i've been trying to integrate for the last fucking two years but um (laughs) a being that maybe i necessarily haven't haven't had contact with Mm -hmm. Um, but an archetype that I've been working with is the goddess Kali. Oh, yeah. Who is a Hindu goddess um, of destruction mm-hmm. um, and war, and but also healing. Um, and she's quite scary as well. Mm-hmm. And she sort of embodies this dark femininity and is often depicted with her tongue coming out of her mouth. Um, yeah. And she is said to sort of rip people's egos off their head and yeah. rip their addictions yeah. out of them and she's this sort of destructive but incredibly healing yeah. energy um and that i just really fuck with that like very heavily like she mm. doesn't beat around the bush she is incredibly strong um but softens when she connects with her beloved Mm. and it's through love that she is able to soften so that's an energy that i've been working with Mm. yeah and sometimes it's not actually like a physical thing you're not expecting to see this cali walking around it's it's more as an energetic embodiment of Mm. that sort of feeling Mm. i know you to be a incredibly wise woman Mm. intuitive woman as well yeah and you've got so much depth to you and uh, there's there's a lot inside there uh, of your spirit and your being and I wonder if we could follow just a very small exercise for Mm -hmm. the time being whether we could just close my eyes or your eyes as well we'll close our eyes together (laughs) 
And um, again, I'm going to invite you to put your hand on your heart because that's where I believe the centre of my being to be. Take a deep breath in. Oh, clear the space. Just tap into that inner being and that knowing and that wisdom that I know that you know resides within you. Mm. And just ask that higher self or that wisdom that resides within you whether there is a particular message that it wants to channel through you and have your listeners here today. I think because I'm sat with you here, the message that my sort of higher self or sovereign self really would like to share through me is that every decision that you make leads you to each moment and I just wanted to express gratitude to you and therefore the universe um, for all the all the decisions that we have made to come to this moment um, and to create together um, and like channel our love um, and connection and be able to share that with other people because um, I'm a big believer that the more specific a story almost the wider the reaches mm. um, and yeah I just wanted to share that thank you that was lovely I really appreciate you sharing that we come to the end mm -hmm. of this interview what a marathon it's been. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. The we have learned rushing. so much. Hopefully you guys have learned a little bit more about wonderful mm -hmm. Naomi here. Isn't she incredible? She's an angel. Um, and I wonder, you know, this journey of yours has not been a solo one. Right? Mm -hmm. Lots of people have accompanied you on this journey. I wonder, just for any closing... We can just do an audio and I'll just make it go back. Yeah, okay. okay. For any closing <laughs> remarks... Uh, if there's anyone in particular or sets of people that you'd like to especially thank for getting mm. me to this point. Well, I want to firstly thank you. <laughs> you. <laughs> you know, I, my heart feels so open right now. I want to thank anyone and everyone who I've ever come in contact with mm. because without them, I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be doing the things I'm doing. But I think especially I always like to thank my parents because well, without them I wouldn't be here. Of course. But they're also incredible, incredible people mm. um, with so much depth and richness and um, wisdom and intelligence um, and knowledge that they've passed on to me. Um, and like are both like, I think some of the most interesting people ever. Um, and of obviously all of my siblings as well for you know, like the people that you grow up with create, that mold tribe. you into who you are. Yeah, mm. that tribe. Um, and all of my all my friends as well who support me week in, week out, um, no matter what's going on. Um, and yeah, especially the, the feminine energy in my life that is so nourishing mm. and nurturing and, and something that I had not necessarily experienced properly, I don't think until this year so yeah yeah that would be my thanks that's so wonderful. and all of my teachers like not like my school teachers <laughs> well some of them yeah. but like you know my spiritual teachers and mm. and other various teachers and yoga teachers and everything who have brought me along on this journey and all of my guides um and spirit guides um and people who have passed who also also guide me yeah that's so lovely. Yeah. Thank you so much for being so transparent and honest and authentic today during mm. this session. I really do appreciate it and I really appreciate you. Mm, Thank you. I appreciate you. Is there anything that you wanted to share or anything that your higher self wanted to say? Oh, okay, I wasn't expecting that. Um, hmm, give me a moment. And for myself, I uh, just want everyone who's listening to know that it's an experience that we've all decided to, to take part in mm. and it's it's incredibly beautiful and it can also be horrific but it's the range itself that really makes the meaning out of life uh, yeah. don't worry it's all okay it's all okay okay is there anything you want to promote 
I asked you this last time. You did ask me this last time. Um, and I am going to be actually making some of my own content very, very soon. Uh, Nomi herself has inspired me. She's wonderful. She's got some incredible content. And by seeing her grow and glow during her <laughs> content sharing, it's actually inspired me to do some of my own. So I've booked a content creator. I've got a coach and things are in the works. So maybe watch this space in a, just a couple of months or so. You can expect to see me popping yeah. up as well. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, as always, follow Diver Dropout Podcast on TikTok and Instagram. Um, and if you want Ben on again, you can message me and let me know <laughs> or comment <laughs> for a third time appearance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you so much. Goodbye. <laughs>